Family Theater presents James Gleason and Otto Kruger. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Retiring Mr. Hewitt, starring James Gleason. And now, here is your host, Otto Kruger. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves. Peace for our families and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Retiring Mr. Hewitt, starring James Gleason as Waldo. Just sand down the edges a bit now, and I'll be for... Yes? You busy, Gramps? No, no, come in, Dolly, come in. What are you making? Oh, I'm just patching up this dresser drawer, the one that sticks so bad, you know. Pretty big job? Oh, I had to take out the whole bottom panel. It was all warped. Looks wonderful. Well, I hope it looks better than you sound. I'm sorry. What's the matter, honey? Oh. Hard day at the office? Partly. No, not even partly. I don't know. It... Gramps, do you like it here? You mean the house? Oh, the, the house, the town, the people. Sure, I think it's great. Don't you like it? I love it. Well? I only wish Dad felt the same way. Oh, I think he likes it a lot more than he lets on. Oh, out. Gramps. I do. In the eight months we lived in Woodside, have you ever heard him say one complimentary thing about it? Well, I think he remarked once last summer that at night his bedroom was cool. What he said was he'd freeze to death without a blanket. Oh, it wasn't that strong. It was a lot stronger. I left out a few adjectives. Well, you don't want to be too hard on your dad now. He keeps thinking of you most of the time when he makes plans. And... Have you heard his latest idea about the highway? No. Oh. Father, are you down in the basement? Yes, Jerry. Is Dolly home yet? I'm down here too, Dad. Would you mind coming upstairs? Sure. Both of us? Yes. Yes, Father. It's rather important. Be right up. What were you saying about a highway? It's something about the local election tomorrow. Henry was explaining the issues to me at lunch today. Oh, you've gotten to that point now, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but don't mention it in front of Dad. Is he still plugging for the Osmond boy? He says he's a go-getter. I'd call that a pretty good description. In five years, Henry will be twice as important as he is. Even so, I can understand your dad's interest in a young man worth a quarter of a million. Shh, he might be in the hall. Dad? You're in here, in the living room. Have a busy day, Jerry? Yes, the store was mobbed. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, say, it's after six. I better start dinner. Oh, there's no rush on that, Dolly. Sit down. You too, Father. A very interesting thing happened to me today. I want to tell you about it. Uh, by all means. It happened on the train this morning going into the city. I ran into young Osborne. Oh? Of the $250,000 Osbournes? You joke all you want. That young fellow is going places. Well, you be sure to let me know when he leaves so I can come out of hiding. No, no, no. Uh, listen, I'm trying to tell you something important. Go ahead, Jerry. If it's about him, it can't be important. Dolly, come but on. I, am I going to tell this or not? You're going to tell it, sir. I, I may ahead. just be a middle-aged floor walker to you, young oh, lady, but Dad. I'm not stupid. I know a good thing when I see it. I apologize. She was just kidding. Kidding, so I can't even open my mouth around Dad, here. I'm sorry. I, I just don't think Billy Osborne is such a much. I know what you think. Son, don't get excited. She thinks a $50 a week law clerk is such a much. Jerry, what was it happened on the train? Well, as I was saying, I ran into young Osborne, and he told me something very interesting about one of the issues to be decided in the election tomorrow. 
You mean about the highway? Uh, what do you know about the highway? You were talking about last night on the phone with someone. Are you in the habit of eavesdropping on private phone conversations? I wasn't eavesdropping. I was watching the television. Uh, Jerry, is this the thing they've had in the papers about electing a representative to the Highway Commission? Yeah, exactly. Uh. And it's our chance to really put Woodside on the map. You mean run a big road through here? You can do it if we play our cards right. Well, then I hope we play them wrong. You what? What's a little township like this need with a big highway? Oh, that's just the point. It won't be a little township once it gets the highway. It'll start to grow. Real estate values will zoom. And so will your taxes. Father, father, this could be a great opportunity. If we help elect young Osborne to that commission as the Woodside representative... I get it. So you get it. What's wrong with supporting him? So he can clean up selling real estate once the value zoom. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly legal. So is the electric chair. Well, just don't think Osborne is going to forget his friends when that highway comes through. I take it, then, the fella running against Osmond doesn't want the hype. Well, that's right. He, he's got a I dog in the manger attitude about this whole community. Hello? Yes? Yes, this is she. Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Osborne, you want to speak to my father? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll take it, Dolly. Well, thank you, just the same, Mr. Osborne, but I've got a date for Saturday. Uh, here's Dad. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Osborne. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. The young candidate himself, oh, no you. less. And it couldn't be much oh, less. You, darling. Well, yes, hmm? we will be. Do you want that highway to come through here? Yes, I fine. don't see any point in that it. Well, if your dad thinks he could yeah, do himself some good by helping Osmond get elected. Fine. Well, how much help is three yes. votes? I think he's chasing a yes. rainbow. Yes, yes, fine. You bet, Mr. Osborne. Yes, we'll be home all evening. Goodbye. <laughs> well, things are looking up. Things are looking up indeed. Is Osborne coming over here tonight? He certainly is. Bringing his mother along, too. His mother? I think you've met her, haven't you, Father? Yeah, once or twice down at the post office. Mm. Very nice lady. Why is Osborne coming here? Oh, he's just making a swing around the neighborhood the night before election. Uh-huh. Well, that's what he said. Oh, say, he'll be here at eight. We better start dinner. Yeah, I think you could use some, son. You, what? Hmm? I've never seen you look so hungry in your whole life. Sure. I've got to get out of my apron. Jerry, it's the Osborns. Be right down. Just putting on a clean shirt. Yes? Uh, are you Dolly's grandfather? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Carson, sir. Henry Carson. Oh, so you're her Henry. Hey, yes, sir. You say, I, I, I've been looking forward to meeting you. C come on in. Come in. Come in. Uh, thank you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Maybe you better not. I beg pardon? This might be a bad time. Well, it's very important that I talk to you. Well, you see, Dolly's father... Yeah, I'm sorry, did you... Henry! Hello, honey. What brings you out here? Now, here, let me close the door. It's what I was telling you today about the election. Dolly, something very funny is afoot. Father? Yes, Jerry? You and Dolly make the Osborns right at home. I'll be down in a jiffy. All right, son. Are you expecting the Osborns? Oh, <clears throat> uh, that wasn't the Osborns after all, Jerry. Oh, well, who was it? Oh, just a wrong doorbell. Take your time. Uh, be down in a minute. Henry, I don't think my father's going to like it if he finds you here. But it's very important that you all understand what Osborne is up to. Uh-oh. Well, at least we know he's up to the front door. Oh, I don't want Osborne to know I've been here. And I don't want Daddy to know you've been here. Well, everybody in Woodside's going to know you've been here if... Your father, will you please get that? Uh, uh j just go on, Jerry. Come on, the kitchen. You can go out the back way. But I can't leave until I tell you. I'm just knotting my necktie. I let them in. Good evening. How do? Mrs. Osborne. Mr. Hewitt. Come in, I'll take your coats. J uh, Jerry, that's my son. He'll be down in a minute. Well, we can't stay long. I told him we'd be by at eight. Yes, well, he's, uh, he's knotting his necktie, Mr. Osborne. He'll be right down. Won't you come into the living room? Just for a minute. What a lovely little house this yeah, we is. we think it's very cozy. You know, uh, I was writing to my sister in Boston last week that they don't make houses like this anymore. Now, when I was a girl... Mother. Uh, yes, William. Later, Mother. 
Uh, Jerry's been telling us uh, that you're a candidate. Oh, uh... well, here I am. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Evening, you Oh, how are you, Mrs. Osborne? Oh, I'm quite well, thank you. You know, I was just remarking to your father that they don't make lovely little houses like this anymore. Mother. You know, uh, yes, William. Um, I'll be happy to show you around the place later, Mrs. Osborne. Oh, I'd love Some it. Some other time, I think. Uh. Well, now, to get to the matter at hand, I think you know I represent the progressive civic element in our little township. <laughs> a- and I wonder where your daughter is, Hewitt. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, that's right. Where is Dolly? Oh, she, uh, uh, she's out in the kitchen. I'll get her. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Osborne. I'll send her right out. Dolly. Come on in, Gramps. They're waiting for you in the living room. I was just telling Dolly... Keep your voice down, Henry. You better go in there. All right. Henry, Hmm? you tell Gramps what you just told me. With pleasure. But I'm supposed to go back in the living room, too. I'll I'll say you had a headache and went upstairs for an aspirin. You better make it fast, Henry. What is it? Well, Osborne won't admit this in a million years, but your three votes in this house will decide the election. What? That's right. But how can three little votes... Within the township, there are only 44 registered voters in all. Including us? Including you. Up to last May, there were only 41. Well, I knew Woodside was small, but I didn't think it was... Here's the important thing. Osborne's conducted a poll, and so's his opponent, Mr. Wilson. He's a friend of my dad's. And it's come out the same way three times now. 21 people are against the highway going through Woodside, and Osborne's been able to bully 20 people into saying they'll vote for it. That's pretty close. Oh, it's closer than you think. He's got to get all three of your votes or he won't get elected to the planning commission. What if he only gets two and it's a tie? Well, they'll have to run it off when they get around to it. But but then the commission will made up its mind and won't do him any good. Have to play ball with him. My, this puts me in a very bad spot. How's that? Well, I just about decided to vote for Osmond because my son Jerry thinks it might help him. But listen, Mr. Hewitt. Gramps, Gramps. Get behind the door. What's going on in there? Is Henry still here? Right here. They're waiting for you in the living room. All right. Henry, you better leave by the back now. Okay. You go ahead, Gramps. I'll be right in. Oh, does this situation smell? What's Osmond got in mind? You'll see. Come on, Henry. So, as I say, Hewitt, if I can add the votes of your family to the many others who are supporting me in this cause, I will not be ungrateful. Is your headache any better, Mr. Hewitt? Uh, Mother, much better, thank you. Uh, Father, sit down, sit down. Mr. Osborne was just explaining... Yes, I heard him, Jerry. (laughs) And I might point out to you, sir, as I have to our other senior citizens in Woodside, that you could, by supporting me in this matter, ensure to your heirs an estate of much greater value than you now hold. Hmm. Is that your way of saying you think I'll be dead before the money starts to roll in? Father! Why, uh, on the contrary, I I mean... Well, all right, Mr. Osborne, let's get down to cases. When will the money start rolling in? Really, Mr. Hewitt, I'm surprised. Mother... Father, father, you're insulting Mr. Osborne. Well, he's insulting us. I'm insulting you? Well, sure. Say, what's all the excitement? Sit down, Dolly. You came in here asking for the three votes that'll put you over the top. And I want to know what's in it for me. Gramps, what are you saying? I'm saying we ought to see a little cash on the barrel. Father, head. for heaven's sake, you're going too far. It, 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 it's it, cold it. turkey. That's what it is, Jerry. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, I think you misunderstand my intentions. I doubt it, young fella. I'm interested purely in increasing the value of the community. Good enough. Let's begin with the Hewitts. Gramps, this, this isn't like you. Just because I've been lying low for the past 20 years, you think I've forgotten how to finagle? Lying low? Now let's get down to business, Billy. What did you call me? That's your name, isn't it? It's not the way I prefer to be addressed. Well, your address is going to be Sing Sing if we don't work this deal out more carefully. Sing Sing! Uh, Mother! Now, what deal are you talking about? Bribery! Election fraud! Father, Father, I can't let you continue to make accusations like this to Mr. Osborne. Jerry, the only difference between what Mr. Osborne wants us to do and what I'm willing to do is that if we do it my way, we get paid for but, it. But, 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 uh, I ne- never considered that the... Isn't that right, Mr. Osborne? Uh, no, Mr. Hewitt, that's wrong. Oh, William, I'm so glad. Mother, in the first place, I am shocked, Mr. Hewitt, to think you would suspect me willing to descend to the level of a common deal. 
I believe you said you would not be ungrateful if we supported you? Yes, I may have said that. Well, just what did you mean? It, uh, well, it, 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 it meant that if the highway came through, your property would increase considerably in value. Well, in that case, we would not be ungrateful that we supported you. But how would you not be ungrateful? Oh. Well, let me put it more positively. I would be grateful. And how would you express this gratitude? By having us over for dinner once a month? Oh, Father, I, I think I'm that... afraid you haven't done much thinking at all tonight, son. We've got this boy in our hip pocket. He needs our three votes. That was the second point I was about to make. Then don't bother. Henry Carson gave me all the facts tonight. Perhaps. That's $50 a week, lawyer. It's 24 and 21 against. You need all three, Billy. Carson was here tonight? I sent for him. He'd go a long way, that youngster. Father? Furthermore, he deserves a piece of this pipe. He's done a fine job. Gramps, Henry's against the highway. Smooth, smooth. He's working it both ways. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, I, I seem to have underestimated you. You wouldn't be the first one, Sonny. Now, what's your proposition? Well, um, I, I, I hesitate to offer you money... Oh, William, I'm so glad. I was afraid you were going to participate in this sordid arrangement, and I couldn't bring myself to believe that you'd do such a thing. So, um, I... William, why haven't you interrupted me? We'll talk about it later, Mother. What about letting us option some of those lots you've got over on South Street, Sonny? Well, that's going to be very valuable land. If the highway goes through... What's the market price now, about 50 cents a foot? About. Father, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Gerald. What? Huh? Huh? Tell you what we do, Billy. We'll option five lots at $100 a piece for 30 days. And if I'm elected? No matter how the price jumps, we got them for 50 cents a foot. Well, you make a fortune. Never begrudge the other fella a chance to make a buck, Sonny. That's why you got into this jam. You wanted it all. Perhaps this is... It's just criminal. Mr. Hewitt, I'm shocked. Shocked that you would force my son into a thing like this. Mother, I'd hardly say he's being forced, Mrs. Osborne. You want out of this deal, Sonny? We've made an agreement, Mr. Hewitt. But, William, it's crooked. I don't wish to discuss it, Mother. Well, I wish to discuss it. Gerald. Oh, Gerald, me. All my life you've brought me up to believe that certain things are right and certain things are wrong. I'd like to remind you, Jerry... That you were the one who came into the house with this scheme tonight. But, but, but it didn't involve anything crooked. Sure it did. Except that you were going to wind up a poor crook. Now you'll have some money to show for your work. But, Gramps, it's wrong. It, it's wrong. It's the most horrid thing I ever heard of. Mother, let me give you a little tip, Mrs. Osborne. If your son's willing to do this just to get started in politics, he'll show you a lot worse before he's through. <laughs> Mr. Hewitt! I'll thank you to keep your ethical observations to yourself. No offense, Sonny. You want to check for the 500 now? Well, I, uh... <clears throat> as it happens, I, I have no option forms with me at the moment. Oh, in that case, you'd better go home and make them out. We'll meet you at the polls 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll bring the check. Very well. Come, Mother. William, I'm so ashamed. But good night, all. I'll see you out, Billy. That won't be necessary. It's my pleasure, Mrs. Osborne. After all, we're partners now, aren't we? Ah, ha, ha. Wonderful morning for an election, hmm? Don't you think so, son? <laughs> Wonderful. And you, Dolly? Just peachy. Leaves are all brown and red and gold. Autumn in the air. Gramps. Uh-huh? You're really going through with this. I've made an agreement. Can't go back on my word. Well, I've got half a mind to vote against Osborne. And make me forfeit the $500 in option money? After all, Jerry, it's you I was trying to help when I went into this. Gramps... There's one thing I don't understand at all. Now, what's that, honey? The $500. That's about all you had in the world. Oh, I've got another 50 or 75 tooked away. Well, 
What are you going to use for money to buy up the option land with? Borrow it from the bank. When they see the price I can get it for, they'll fall all over me. Smooth, smooth. Well, there's the polling place up ahead. Yeah. And Osborne and his mother waiting for us outside. Don't look so glum, Jerry. Remember, you wanted to put Woodside on the map. Well, I'm beginning to think I like it just the way it is. You'll change your tune when we get that new highway through here. Oh, it'll be wonderful. For miles, you won't be able to see anything but concrete. Ah, good morning, Mr. Osborne. Morning. I, uh, take it you have the check. Right here in my pocket. Uh, just a second. Gotta get my pipe out of the way. The tobacco and tweed ring. I beg your pardon, Miss York. Oh, nothing, nothing. Ah, here we are. You have the option forms? Right here. Yeah, yeah, yes. They, they seem to be in order. Is everything understood now? Perfectly. All three of you vote for me. <clears throat> yes, yes. Miss Hewitt? Just call me the voice of the people. You realize, of course, that if you don't vote for me, your grandfather will forfeit his option money. We realized it as soon as he made the offer last night. When did you realize it? Oh, I, I was just uh, reminding you. Come on, let's get this over with. Very well. Mother? Uh, yes, William? Shall we go inside? Uh, very well. Uh, Mrs. Osborne? Yes, Mr. Hewitt. Could I speak to you privately for a moment? I don't think we have anything to discuss. I might change your mind. It'll only take a second. Uh, well, I... You folks go ahead. We'll be right in. Mother? We'll be right in, Osborne. Stop being so rude to your mother. I beg your pardon. If I were her, I'd give you a good spank and you need one. Why, you old meddler! Oh, shut up, Osborne. What? You heard me. You're talking to my father. So keep your voice civil or I'll mop up the sidewalk with you. I love you, Daddy. I, I will not become involved in a public brawl. <laughs> it won't be public. Just you and me. Jerry, don't make any trouble. You folks go on in and vote. We'll be right along. All right. And vote the way we agreed to. Come on, Dolly. We'll wait for you in the car, Father. Go ahead, son. I'll be right along. Mother! I'll be right along. Huh? Very well. Well, uh, Mr. Hewitt, what was it you wished to say to me? Well, I... <clears throat> I think I just said most of it, Mrs. Osborne. I... Well, I... I don't understand. I, I think your son needs a spanking. That's a fine way for you to talk about last night. Oh, I'm not saying that my son didn't need a spanking, too. But I think he's been given one. I'm, a, I, I'm afraid I, I don't follow you. I... Well, let me put it this way. Suppose you were to thrash William to within an inch of his life. You, you, you mean actually take him over my knee? Why, he's twice my size. That's true, but I can think of a number of ways little folks can always knock the big ones down, no matter how big they get. Really? Yes. <laughs> Shall we go in and vote, Mrs. Osborne? <laughs> Let's see now. Nail the cross leg to the side joist. Mm hmm. Yes? Gramps? Yeah, honey. A letter just came for you, special delivery. Oh, thanks, thanks. Gramps, I'm awfully sorry. Well, <laughs> at least I, I guess I should be awfully sorry about the results of the election. Well, things like that are pretty hard to figure, honey. Osborne just got licked, that's all. I. Just hope you don't think it was Dad or I who voted against him. Oh, no, no, no. I'm pretty certain it was someone else. Who's the letter from? It's not a letter, just a money order for $250. From whom? I can't imagine. Gramps? I can't. $250. That's exactly one half of the money you lost on those options. Why, gosh, it isn't that. Mrs. Osborne sent you that money. Well, why would she do a thing like that? What did that? you tell her outside the bowling place this morning? Why, not a thing. You did, too? What did you tell her? Well, well, I did remark that her son needed a spanking. And so she spanked him at the ballot box. Is that it? I can't imagine. Well, someone voted against him, and it wasn't us. I couldn't say how Mrs. Osborne voted. You owe 
liquor. I don't know what you're talking about. She should have sent you the whole 500. Oh, no. Well, it's a small price to pay for th to keep that sweet son of hers out of public service. No, no, no. She, uh, she shouldn't have to pay for spanking someone else's son, too. What? I'll explain it to you sometime. When? When your father's not around. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is Otto Kruger again. Of course, it's impossible to read today's flaming headlines without grave thought and great consternation. Who can think any longer that these things are at a distance? Neither should we think of God as at a distance. As the poet says, telling us of the nearness of God, pluck but a flower, and you start an angel's wing. Every whispered prayer is whispered into the ear of God, bending low to hear us, eager to help us, knowing our needs better than we know them ourselves. Prayer is the most powerful force in the world more powerful than words or armies or atomic energy. Prayer is not bound to the earth like armies or restricted to the stratosphere like planes or held to the seas like ships. Prayer is the divine arrow that goes right to the heart of God. We must use it for ourselves and for the world. For just as the family that prays together stays together, so too a world at prayer will be a world at peace. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Retiring Mr. Hewitt, starring James Gleason. Otto Kruger was your host. Others in our cast were Marjorie Bennett, Anne Whitfield, John Daner, Marvin Miller, and Bob Emlin. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Double Crossing, starring Richard Denning. Esther Williams will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.